Well, Kylan, uh, the, the show today was supposed to be, we hyped it up as a trade show, but Bookie Cousins said some fascinating things. Mm -hmm. Steve Kerr himself said some very interesting, interesting things a couple days ago, and we have to touch on that. Plus, we're going to obviously comment on Clay's comments following last night's game that happened after our show. There's a lot to touch on with the Warriors. You ready to go, Kyle? Yep. Oh, yeah. This, this <laughs> is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network, FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. You can follow Kylan Mills on all social media platforms at her name, Kylan Mills. It's super easy. You can follow me, Cyrus Sotsis, on thread. Before we start, Kylan, quick shout out. Our boss at Locked On informed us this morning. We got 2 million views on YouTube. I have no idea if that's good or not. It sounds amazing. What, were, what was your reaction to that? Just and saying the words 2 million sounds like a lot, even if it was over the course of the year. So that's what he was saying, right? It was in 2023, 2 million Correct. YouTube views. Uh, I was shocked. It just, it seems like a high number. I mean, we post five days a week or you post, I guess, five days a week, but still to get, when we're in season, it drops down to three days a week. So even with shows getting five, 10,000 views, just to see it all add up to that big of a number. It was very impressive. So anyways, thank you to all of you for yeah. coming and hanging out with us, stopping by, letting us know your opinions. It's all about you, the audience, viewers, listeners, however you're getting your podcasts. We appreciate it. Absolutely. I mean, this doesn't exist without you. I, we can't thank you enough. Um, I certainly can. I, I never take this for granted. So they, yeah, echoing your sentiments, thank you. Um, and then uh, speaking of our audience, somebody mentioned this on, on my Threads account. Uh, they tagged me in a post. This is, and look, I have no idea what this show is because on the YouTube side of it, it's under the, all the smoke umbrella, all the smoke I'm guessing is, is in reference to Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson, both former Golden State Warriors. Uh, they have a fantastic show. It's one of the few shows I, I do give high praise to you. I, I love the content. You're going to be working with Matt Barnes, I think at some point for NBC Sports Bay Area. I, I hope that happens because I, I, I'm very curious to hear what kind of person he is. I'm a fan personally. Um, but within that umbrella, Rachel Nichols was on their YouTube channel and someone tagged me. I cannot thank that person enough. No, I don't no. have that in front of me, who that person is, but he, he, her and Boogie Cousins, whether the show is them two hosting together, it's called Bully Ball with Rachel and Boogie. And the topic was the Golden State Warriors and more specifically, Steve Kerr. Kylan, last year, I remember you saying Boogie would be a great addition for this Warriors team largely because he knows the system. He's a former member of this team. He would fit a lot. He would check a lot of boxes off that this team needs. Yeah. Size, three-point shooting. And he, I mean, you right? I mean, you were really into him as well, correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought it would be a good addition if the Warriors were looking for a veteran big, someone who doesn't need to play a lot of minutes but provide some size and interior protection because people were going after me at the time it was kind of a split 50 50 deal some people wanted boogie or would have been happy with him signing him for a vet minimum others said he's washed blah 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 but you're talking about just needing interior size for in a small you know in small doses the Warriors didn't need someone to get so anyways I was a I was all for it had the Warriors decide to do that but there were reports that came out that he or I don't know was it Steve Kerr or Bob Myers said no to ever bring Boogie back within the organization. No one ever, I don't think anyone ever said it publicly, but you no, and I- No, there were reports. There were reports like The Athletic, like there were there were folks reporting that that possibly that was a reason why discussions never really got further. But was it, like I said, was it was it Steve or was it Bob Myers? I my understanding, remember. look, you and I both have connections. My connections from my understanding is that it's it was much more of a Steve Kerr thing. Steve Kerr- okay. And Boogie, you know, they just, they, they didn't jive for whatever reason. Um, but Boogie has never publicly come out and criticized Kerr. He's never really no. said much um, on the record. 
until now. And this to me was unbelievable. It's about what we're going to play about three minutes of the segment. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Boogie Cousins and Rachel Nichols talking about Steve Kerr and the Golden State Warriors. And on top of that, like I said, I'm going out on a limb saying this. We go back to, you know, the previous summer we watched Team USA. They struggle, and there's no reason for that. And it's only one common denominator in that equation, and that's Steve Kerr. Maybe it's time wow. for maybe it's time for new leadership in this Warriors locker. Oh. Maybe it's time. And the reason I say that, even the Apple, even the Apple iPhone gets an update. You know what I mean? So it's time for the Warriors to update this team and um, a new identity, a new system, something to to get this core group over the hump. And um, I was a part of this organization. I know, I know the mood. I know how they carry themselves. It's super laid back. It's super, you know, lackadaisical. It's, it's, it's very nonchalant. And obviously, they get their work done. They're professionals and all of these things. But these were the standards that were set in place for this team. And it starts with the leadership, which is Steve Kerr. Now, we're looking for some urgency now with this team to get them back in their rhythm. And like I said, maybe it's just time for a new leadership. You know what I mean? And um, – I think that's an option for them. Obviously, I feel like it could still work if they put the right pieces around this core group and we, and they can still make this system that Steve Kerr put in place flourish. But as of right now, that's just not the case. So I think looking for new leadership should be an option that's on the table for this Warriors team. Look, it, it's totally fair thing to bring up, 100%. I, I would quibble a little bit with the Olympic thing, with the Team USA thing. I don't think Team USA did so well in the end because they just didn't have the players. I mean, the team is going to look totally different in Paris this summer. We didn't have our best players there. So I I, I, I'd, I'd hold off on that. But but I, I, I look, you don't think so? Why? You think they should have um, done with the B team? They should have beaten the, the rest of the world? Are, Absolutely. It's no excuse for it. Like we've we've seen this time and time again. We haven't always gone to these tournaments with the best players in the league and we've still been successful. So why all of a sudden now is it the players fault? This is the top league in the world. We, we can all agree on that. These are some of the most talented young players coming up in the top league in the world. What's the excuse mm -hmm. for not bringing it home? It, there is no excuse. Well, you have very good teams guys. on the other side now. We made the rest of the world good at basketball. It's our own problem. It's our own fault. We brought the dream team over there, and, you know, it's fun to hold two generations of players at this point, and their other teams are good. I don't know. When Austin Reeves is one of your top players, is that the, the best problem. team to go into international competition? And that's the problem. Austin Reeves shouldn't have been – he shouldn't have been the focal point of the Team USA team. It should have been Anthony right. Edwards. That's the point. Right. You're muted. There we go. Thank you, Kylan. Uh, and look, Boogie expressed his feelings right there. Your immediate reaction to that, Kylan. Um, very fascinating conversation. Uh, listening to the lead up to that as well, the discussion was about uh, what needs to change for the Warriors. How can they get this team back on track? Uh, they also touched on, which I think we are going to get to later on in the show, or at least we can, um, what the possibilities would be for the Warriors uh, making a trade and who would possibly be up on the chopping block. I just thought it was very interesting hearing Boogie's perspective as a player who's been a member of this organization and for him to point the finger immediately at Steve Kerr, uh, I think he had some valid points and it was interesting that he brought up team USA because I do think there was some faulty coaching that led to the team's results. Like, yes, Rachel's partially right in that it was nowhere near the best players in the mm -hmm. USA or the best players in the NBA who are Americans, but still, the team had, I think, had enough skill, talent, depth, athleticism that they should have performed better. And we saw Steve Kerr do a lot of the same things he does with the Warriors in terms of running the small ball. Um, and I do think they could have been coached better. Um, so I, I think that he had a point. I thought I think it's fascinating, though. It's interesting, though, that you bring up that you thought that Steve Kerr was possibly a factor in why Boogie Cousins wasn't brought back to the Warriors. Like I said, there definitely were reports out. It was never like something that was publicly acknowledged, but that behind the scenes, one of the reasons why conversations didn't get any further was, you know, some type of front office or staff not wanting Boogie back in the organization. Um, I'm curious if there's any bad blood there, uh, I, you know, bad blood. Maybe they didn't get along if there's, if that might be a factor in Boogie, um, saying that those kinds of things or, you know, or pointing the finger at Steve Kerr in that kind of way. But I thought he had valid points. Mm. I thought he had valid points. 
Um, and then something else that wasn't included in the clips is that, you know, he said that the Warriors clearly need a new direction. He said it may be time for a new system, a new viewpoint, a new perspective in order to try to get the most out of this veteran core, because what they're doing right now isn't working. Um, but, you know, I think you're either on one of two sides of the coin. Either you think that, yes, coaching and rotations is the bigger issue, or you think that roster construction is the bigger issue, or you think it's a combination of both. I would say I fall under that category. I think it's a combination of the roster construction not being where it needs to be to compete in the NBA. You also have individual players not performing up to their standards, like Clay Thompson, who hasn't been Clay of the years past, Andrew Wiggins completely falling off from where he was in the 2022 championship run. Um, and then I do think coaching also is to blame. I think uh -huh. that Steve Kerr, both last season and this season, could be doing a better job utilizing players, better job with rotations. I would like to see a tweak in the game plan, um, you know, some fresh ideas. So I don't think that's a bad idea either. Another thing that I keep looking back to as well is Mike Brown leaving the organization. Coincidentally, they haven't had success in the last two years. So I wonder how much of his coaching perspective truly behind the scenes was influencing what the Warriors were doing and the way they were able to win that 2022 championship. Um, so I think that also lends itself to saying, hey, coaching is, is an issue because you lose your top associate, the guy who's doing your defensive schemes and the best defensive team in the NBA, the Warriors were two years ago, and suddenly they completely fall off. They were not a good defensive team last year. Um, I've, I don't know what the latest numbers are uh, in terms of the Warriors defense, but I think there clearly has been a shift that's led to some of the lack of success the last two seasons. So now the question Absolutely. that people are going to ask is who would you get to replace Steve Kerr? If there's no one better, then what's the point of getting rid of him? So I think that's <laughs> also a question, a fair question to ask who replaces Kerr. Is there really someone better out there? Oh, Brent Berry. I've been saying that from the start. I already oh, have my you, name. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We could, you have been but we could do a whole show about like, uh, you know, potential coaching options out there. Like I like somebody mentioned uh, some I forgot his name, but he's an assistant with the Sacramento Kings who supposedly is a very innovative individual. I've spoke to someone who said Mike Brown, if he was offered the Warriors job, would come back in a heartbeat. And mm -hmm. and like, you know, whether or not you'd have to give the Kings something to, you know, because he's still under contract. I mean, that's a, that's a longer discussion for another show. Well, let's talk about the coaching thing in just a moment, because I have a lot to add there. You, you brought up something interesting in, re in regarding to the assistants, which I think is a huge part of the problem. Um, and not to mention, and Boogie making comments about the lackadaisical approach behind the scenes. Um, I, I don't hear that that often, how laid back it is, because Kerr's always talking about, like he recently used the word grit. Um, we, we hear a lot about the culture and Kerr loves bringing that up. But if the culture is just, be chill, be laid back, do whatever you want. That raises a whole other point, a whole, whole bevy of questions there. We have a lot more to discuss, especially about that. I want to talk about the assistance in just a moment. And then we got to talk about Kerr um, because he said something I thought that was fascinating in regard to Moses Moody, who's been DNP'd for two or three games in a row. We'll talk about it. We have a lot, lot to, to get to. Lot to get to. Lot to get to. First and foremost, though, let's give some love to better help. Uh, and today's episode is, is sponsored by BetterHelp. Uh, give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA and get on your way to being yourself. And look, it, whether it's something minor, like just your anxieties shooting out through the roof because the Golden State Warriors are just, you know, driving you insane. I get it. It could be all kidding aside. It could be something very serious. Look, it, like my dad had a heart attack, a major one recently. And that shook me to the core. So whether it's family health issues, whether it's whatever is going on in your life that is beating you down, it's okay if you're not doing well. It's fine. And it's also okay to seek help. And that's where better help could be a solution for you. It's all about uh, you know, mental health and helping you solve that issue, whatever it is. And especially around the New Year's, right? It's you get you have all this talk about New Year's resolutions and then. You feel disappointed in yourself, maybe if you don't live up to that, whatever the issues are, it's okay to get therapy. And especially if the therapy is convenient, it's simple, it's virtual, so you don't have to spend money on gas, you don't have to spend time driving to an office. It's from the comfort of your home. You could change therapists if you don't like the first or second or third one you get. You have options. It's flexible. It's easy. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, Give BetterHelp a try. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, 
H E L P dot com slash locked on NBA. You are locked on Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Dawn has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24 7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel. And follow Kylan Mills on all social media platforms at her name. It's super easy. Kylan Mills at Kylan Mills. I'm sorry. You can follow me, Cyrus Sauces, on threads at dog wild i hope that's easy for you as well look here the, the coaching thing real fast i got to touch on this because you mentioned yeah. mike brown leaving no one talks about the fact that jama malalela left for, in, a, in a lateral move it's always like a little sus when you're, you're seeing people leave the jobs they're in for another job that is not a promotion he he left and and right. for for the same job in toronto uh you know uh, the, the collins twins i always forget was it was a jaron or john who was the assistant i always forget um, he was an assistant for a while. In fact, he was the defensive coordinator for this team for a long time. He left. That was a mutual uh, a decision. And Collins is, is holding a lateral position somewhere else. What I don't like about this, the, the assistance in, in, in terms of Kerr's administration right now is that it, it seems like there's a lot of yes men there. Ron Adams was the defensive architect of the Warriors defense for most of these championships. He's still technically part of the team, but you never see him on the on the on the sideline anymore, the, the, you know, the bench, whatever we're calling it largely because he's mostly retired, but he's still around as a consultant. He's yeah. at practices has a Steve Nash type of role as a friend of mine, uh, eloquently, uh, compared. Um, so we're, so they're missing him. Kenny Atkinson. I don't know a single person who raves about this guy. He turns down interviews. So we don't know anything about him. Um, I, you know, but the results since he's taken over the defense have not been great. The defense has sucked in the last year and a half that he's been in charge. The guy, the other person sitting next to Steve Kerr is his best friend, Bruce Frazier, his best friend from college. His nickname is Q. Have nothing against Q, but he's not really a coach. His primary role with the team is, quote unquote, Stephen Curry's uh, uh, sh shooting coach. But even that's not entirely true because Steph has his own team of shooting coaches. So Bruce Frazier basically just catches Steph's rebounds and makes Steph feel good. That's fine. That's great. But should he be the person sitting next to Steve Kerr being his primary advisor when he has no resume? The, the only reason why Bruce Frazier is even in coaching is because Steve Kerr, when he was GM of the Suns, brought Bruce Frazier in as like a scout or some minor role there. And then when Kerr got blown out from that job because he didn't he, he did not do a good job as GM of the Suns, uh, Bruce Frazier was also blown out. So the point is. For, the optics are obvious. You see those massive amount of assistants there just sitting, like 10 of them each game. I don't know who a lot of these people are. All I know is is I don't see results coming out of it. I see I don't see elite assistants on that staff, and that bothers me. I think that's part of the problem with this team. What are your thoughts on that, if any? <laughs> I, I uh, That was a lot. That was a lot. Sorry, sorry, I, know, I, know, um, I apologize. I, I think the criticism of Kenny Atkinson is fair. Um, I would love to see some of the results in terms of what exactly he's doing, because like you said, the, the defense by the numbers has fallen off. It's fallen off by the eye test. It's just not good. And if he's now responsible for that, at what point is does he need to answer for exactly what's happening schematically that's leading to the Warriors playing the way they are and the numbers dropping off so significantly without major changes to the roster? I mean, compared to the team that won a championship, the top six, seven players are back to where there should not be such a significant drop in the team's ability to defend. And especially this season, the Warriors got rid of their worst defender last year, who was Jordan Poole. Uh, I'm sorry, but they got rid of him. CP3, to me, yes, he can be attacked, but he's still a defensive upgrade compared to Jordan Poole. Like, Jordan Poole was like a traffic cone out there. Um, and so, to me, he was an upgrade. And, and, you know, there's no reason why the Warriors should not be – higher up or better defensively. So I do think that there's something to be said for that um, in terms of what, <laughs> what all of those assistants are doing and the optics about who's working beside Steve Kerr. I mean, I don't know. Well, I mean, well, just where, where does the blame fall? You know, well, they're, put it in perspective for you. One of the assistants, I always forget his name and I apologize for that, but he was brought in as a big man coach. He was Jokic's former 
uh, coach. He was brought in, I think, to help Wiseman. Great mm-hmm. job there. And the, and the Warriors have no bigs to develop, but he's still there as an assistant. And, and I feel like Kerr, he's even admitted this. He admitted this in an interview a year ago where he said a huge reason why Kenny Atkinson was bumped up uh, to take over Mike Brown's spot was because Kerr pref- wants to have people around him that he likes. That is not symbolic of great leadership. The leadership playbook, if you want, the great leadership always starts with hiring people who are smarter than you, who are better than you, who challenge you. So maybe you're getting some new perspective and all around everyone is growing as a result. I'm not seeing that with with, with Steve Kerr and his coaching staff. I don't know if you agree or disagree with me on that sentiment, but I'm not impressed at all. Is what I'm trying I, to say. I don't know. I don't know enough about what goes on behind the scenes to make a fair judgment of that. But I do remember Dejan Milicevic, who was brought in, who was that Serbian coach who worked with the Okic, was brought Thank in you. to, to yes. coach specifically James Wiseman. Uh, I mean, maybe they have him working with Trace Jackson Davis now. Um, so I, I am not opposed to him sticking around. But I think there's something to be said that Steve Kerr needs to upgrade the coaching staff. Like, I'm, I'm not going to argue with that. And I to me, it starts with Kenny Atkinson, because to me, the defense has been such a big problem the last two seasons. That is from the outside what looks to be the biggest issue in terms of if you need to start shaking things up, that's who I would go with first. Bruce Frazier, I will say, from going to practices, from being in the gym, like he has a good rapport with Steph Curry. No he doubt. through a lot of drills with Steph Curry, and I think that there is a value to that. Whether he should be the first coach on the bench? That's my issue. You know, I'm not saying Bruce I don't Frazier, know. I, I like Q. I'm not saying he should be gone. I'm just mm-hmm. saying, he, I don't know if he should be the, the, the direct right-hand man of Steve Kerr is what I'm trying to say. Like on that bench, it's not like he has a lot of qualifications to be the top assistant. And that's basically the role he has. It's him and Kenny Atkinson. And I just think that's kind of wild. I don't know. That, that, I just want to add that perspective. I'm not calling for his head. All I'm saying is it's weird that Steve Kerr's best friend who doesn't exactly have a resume of coaching pedigree is yet the number one guy. Like, I don't, I'm not a big I fan get your of your point. And, and, you know, when you look at the pedigree of Mike Brown, comparatively, like it's apples to oranges because there's such, you know, a stark difference. So I, I think what you're saying makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That, and that's, yeah. And you're right. Mike Brown had pedigree. Alvin Gentry had pedigree. Mm-hmm. Uh, Luke Walton was a, was a weird one. I don't know if he had pedigree or not, but you know, he, he, he rode that, that assistant job to a lot of places. Um, anyways, when we come back, we got to play the soundbite of Steve Kerr talking about Moody because he's getting DNPs left and right. And I, I don't think either of us, Kylan, are, are feeling good about it. I, you know, he's this is a, a, not only just a great kid, but a, a great athlete. And you, like you mentioned on last night's show, seven two seven three week span, whatever you said, I, I, yeah, I don't remember right the exact name, but, but yeah, he's the, the good. The guy can play, and the fact that. And here's another thing I want to quickly say to you, because a lot of people think like I I I love Kaminga. I don't I don't know him personally. I, the re, a huge reason why I advocate for Kaminga and to a lesser extent Moody so much is because these were two lottery picks in one of the deepest drafts in NBA history, and it makes my stomach churn if not only the Warriors' 15 win season was all for naught because James Wiseman resulted in nothing, but now you had a chance of, of two more lottery picks. And to have three high picks result in nothing, that was driving me insane. Like, you have to also dedicate some time in coaching to developing talent. And especially if your team's like a, you know, a 500 team like they are right now. So I just want to throw that out there as well. It's not so much, I think Kaminga is going to be a superstar player. But besides that, I think it's criminal to just let lottery picks sit there wasting away DNPing. And that also, that sentiment also applies to Moses Moody. And we'll get into that in just a moment. First, got to give some love to FanDuel. Sorry, Kylan, did you want to add anything before you go to the break? No, no, no. I was agreeing with you. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get into it after a quick break. Awesome. Uh, and, and let's give some love during this timeout uh, to FanDuel, the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. Football is the postseason is almost here. The 49ers have locked up the number one seed, which is incredible. And even though the NFL regular season is wrapping up, there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place just a $5 bet. You don't even have to win the bet. They've they've upgraded their promotion. It's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. And the, and that those bonus bets are as good as cash, folks. You can you can do whatever you want with it, have fun with it. And the app is so easy to use. There's so many different ways to to play FanDuel, whether it's same game parlays, you can find bets, 
in their new explore tab you can make a parlay in the parlay hub which is the best way to find popular parlays and so much more win money on the niners i don't know about this sunday's game because we don't even know if their starters are going to show up but when the postseason comes around cash in bet on the niners they're going to win the whole thing this year visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup fanduel the official partner of the nfl you are locked on warriors your daily golden state warriors podcast part of the locked on podcast network your team every day Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first, uh, your first place. What I do? I'm just dropping a brain fart right now. <laughs> your first <laughs> listen. Your first listen every day. Every dayers, we're obviously going to have a full week of show. <laughs> Kevin Dana is finally going to join the show a week from today. That dude is busy. He literally texted me his schedule. It's psychotic, Kyle, and he has like your schedule. Like, busy, yeah, like, no, I, I talk, we commiserate all the time because he it's, also is the craziest schedule ever. It's absolutely it's ridiculous. Um, it, it really is. So, anyways, uh, and, and and I want to call out this this chump right here in the chat who, who likes who, and the reason why I bring it up is because he left this comment. Nick Ellert, you're a total d bag. I'm gonna block you right now because you left this comment. On yesterday's show saying, save your time. Don't bother watching the show. Cyrus is just going to come here and praise Kaminga and talk about how Kaminga, even though he had a horrible game, he didn't have a horrible game. He wrote that before the game. That's how that's how much of a hater he was. So you're you're done, man. He's a troll on Twitter. Your name is very familiar. You're gone. Uh, stop with the Kaminga hate. He was just going to literally chat again and hating on Kaminga. There's no good reason for that. Anyways, um, let's hear from Steve Kerr. And there's a few things in the chat I also want to address as well, because there's some interesting things written there. We're touching on some uh, rather uh, fascinating subjects, I think. So here is um, Steve Kerr. And I bring this up because the question was, was raised about Moses Moody and all these damn DNPs. Let's hear what Steve Kerr had to say about that. Steve, um, Moses has always been like a, a, a really good player for you when he's given been given minutes, but but given that this point of his career, where do you how do you try to utilize him best for you when, when he's well? <clears throat> Moses right now is the victim of our depth as a as a team as a roster. Um, I've said it uh, many times publicly. I think we have thirteen guys who could all uh, be in the rotation. Um, Corey Joseph. Every time I put him out there has played really well. Obviously, he's got two Hall of Fame point guards ahead of him, so it's tough to play um, three guards. But when Corey's in the rotation, I feel great. Um, when Moses is in the rotation, I feel great. Um, when you go down the list, I, I, I feel confident that 13 guys could be in the rotation. You can only play nine or ten. That's the reality. So we are trying to – find different combinations. One player like Gary coming in has a, uh, an effect, a domino effect on the entire rotation. So now you're mixing and matching. So at different times this year, Moses has been out of the rotation. JK has been out of the rotation. Gary's been out. Um, and because we haven't found consistency, we're going to continue to experiment right now. Uh, Moses is out, but I know the way he carries himself um, and he's going to find his way back in. I think the way uh, Moody's being treated is criminal. And then the fact that he compares Moody with Corey Joseph. I was hearing the exact same thing a year ago, only substitute Corey Joseph for Ty Jerome. That is when I started being very suspicious of Steve Kerr's judgment. That attribution is crazy to me. What are your thoughts, Kylan? Uh, yeah, I completely agree. Uh, the fact that he immediately went from Moody and segued into Corey Joseph. The fact that Steve Kerr says he feels great when Corey Joseph is in the lineup in the, in the rotation I'm like, what? And I think that Corey Joseph has had okay games, but it's just like there are s pretty much everyone on the roster I'd play before Corey Joseph. So I, I just am so confused as to why Steve Kerr seems to love him so much uh, and refuses to play Moses Moody. Um, and, you know, I've gotten I tweeted this last night. I tweeted free Moses Moody. And that was it. And like 99 percent of people were agreeing with me the one percent who were pushing back were just like i can't believe you guys are acting like he's such an all-star that he's the best player on the team he has to be out there like no but he's consistently played well on a team mm -hmm. that has not had players consistently playing well um and he is one of the team's lottery picks and i think you made a great point cyrus just in our last segment earlier in the episode that what's what's there to gain from the warriors lottery pick sitting on the bench 
not developing, not getting any better, not being able to move their careers forward. Because to be honest, the only way to really get better in the NBA is to play in the NBA. Mm -hmm. I only do so much in the G League and so much in practice before it's the game experience. It's going to help you take your game to the next level. And if Moses Moody isn't going to get that opportunity, I think trade him somewhere else. Let the guy move his career forward. Now, some folks, like I said, there is some pushback just in terms of GP2. If he was healthy, if he was back in the in the rotation, who do Moody's minutes come from? I already I have an answer for that. I okay, all right. Wait, what's your answer? Well, I was looking at the minutes just from last night's game. You know where those minutes, especially now that Gary Payne the second's injured again, he played 10 minutes. There was okay. 10 minutes for Moody right there. Chris Paul should not be playing 30 minutes. I have nothing I against agree. Chris Paul. And I also I think that he's he's actually has brings a lot of value in the sense that Trace Jackson Davis and Kaminga, their development, I think, is largely because of Chris Paul and his guidance when they're all playing together on the court. I don't want to lose Chris Paul just for that reason alone, because I'm really worried about these young players if Chris Paul ends up being traded. Chris Paul, instead of 30 minutes, how about 20? And then right there, that's 20 minutes for Moody. Is that yeah. good, Kylan? Is that is that is that still answer your question? I don't know. You tell me. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think CP3's minutes can be cut down. And I told you I don't necessarily like him starting next to Steph. Um, I also thought that, for example, in last night's game, and it's happened several times recently, like Brandon Pajemski doesn't need to be playing 30 minutes a night. Like I don't get what Steve Kerr's obsession is with certain players where it's like feast or famine. He's not in the rotation at all. Then suddenly he's playing 30 minutes a night. And it's like, Moses Moody takes baby steps towards playing more, playing more, playing more. Then he's cut from the rotation. Like, why can't it be balanced out more? Yeah. Why can't Brandon Pajemski be playing in the 20 to 23 minute range and Moses Moody be playing in the 20 minute range? And, and both guys are able to contribute. They do different things. Like, I'm not saying they play the same position before everyone comes at me. Whereas already have two traditional point cards. Steph Curry can run the point. Chris Paul can run the point. There's no reason for them to start together. CP3 was supposed to be the second unit point guard. They don't necessarily need Brandon Pajemski to be playing 30 minutes a night. And you talk about the Warriors having issues with size. Like, there you have it right there. You've got two of your smaller guards playing 30 minutes a night. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing because I'm someone Why? in the chat said, because someone in the chat just said uh, Gary Payton's 10 minutes, Chris Paul's 10 minutes, 20 for, for Corey Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean a lot. Uh, we're, we're running out of time here, Kylan. Um, so we're not going to touch on the yeah. clay thing. We talked about him a little bit last night. It, it's, it was a very sentimental uh, uh, attribution. And I love the self-awareness. Um, but you, I asked you last night, and I'm wondering if you're revising this at all, your answer, that the, the fact that Draymond Green has not been around the team at all, right? <clears throat> we, met, we reported that on the show last night. Uh, I don't think we were the ones who broke that news, but... What I didn't realize before saying that is that Steve Kerr had this quote, and, and we're running out of time, so I'm not going to play, but real fast. He said, the space has been good for us and for him. And I'm not, and, and I'm paraphrasing, but do you, I'm starting to think like, that maybe there's something going on here, that maybe the Draymond Green era is over for the Warriors. Maybe not, but it, this seems a little weird. Uh, do you maybe still feel I like think it's not a big deal? I think something the Boogie – sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but we are running out of time. I think no, something probably. Boogie Cousins said – could be true and it goes beyond Steve Curry said it's time for new leadership in the locker room I think that's Draymond Green I think that's mm. also Draymond Green and I'm not saying trade him necessarily but I'm saying take a back seat someone else needs to be leading this locker room that's what all I'm going to say about that there you go there you go Kylan uh have a great rest of the week these have been a fantastic two shows um thanks to everyone again two million that's that's huge I you know I that's a big number I don't know how you can spin that so and that's just on the YouTube side of things. Real fast, uh, I just want to address really quickly um, uh, a metal pig. I just want to highlight this real fast because because people still bring up the starting five uh, of last year post Mike Brown. That starting five net rating was through December. Okay, like 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 that. that it's a very. I just wouldn't put a lot of weight into the fact of the Warriors starting five last year led the NBA in net rating because again it was through December. The sample size wasn't that much. And clearly Wiggins and to a lesser extent Clay have not been the same players since. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Any last words, Kylan? We got about 30 seconds. Yep. Have a great night. Bye bye, everyone. And I hope you're happy we didn't play any music today. I know that was a disaster. That was a one time <laughs> show. We're never playing that again. <laughs> bye bye, everyone. Have a good night. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. That was a great.